If you sailed on the Mayflower in 1620. By Anne McGovern, illustrated by Anna DeVito. This is the table of contents. In the table of contents, you will see questions. And on those questions, the answers are found on the pages to the side, which is new, unique to this book. So if you have questions, check out these three pages of contents to see if your question is there about if you sailed on the Mayflower in 1620. This is a diagram of the Mayflower. The Pilgrims. Who were the Pilgrims? A Pilgrim is someone who goes on a long, long journey. The people on the Mayflower were leaving their homes to sail far away to a new land, a new life. They were going on a long, long journey, and so we call them pilgrims. Where does the pilgrim story begin? In England, many years ago, everyone had to obey the rules of the king's church. There were some Englishmen who wanted to have their own separate church. They were called separatists. They had secret church meetings. The king found out about the secret meetings and he put some of the men in prison. Now the separatists were afraid to stay in England. They went to Holland in 1608. There they could worship God as they pleased. They lived in Holland for 12 years. Life in Holland was not easy. The men had to work very hard. They made very little money, and they were worried. They did not want their children to forget how to speak English. They did not... want their children to become soldiers and sailors for Holland. What could they do? Perhaps they could go to the New World, some of them thought. These are the people we call pilgrims today. The pilgrims needed a ship to take them to the New World. They bought a ship, the Speedwell, in Holland. But the Speedwell was small and old. They would need a second ship too, a bigger and better ship. But where would they get such a ship? They didn't have any more money. At last, they made an agreement with some businessmen in England. The businessmen got them a ship, the Mayflower, and bought some food and supplies. In return, the pilgrims had to agree to work for the businessmen for seven years. The pilgrims promised. To send furs and lumber from the New World. Then, after seven years, they could begin to work for themselves. The pilgrims thought the agreement was not fair, but that was the only way that they could get to the new world. They sailed the Speedwell from Holland to England, where the Mayflower was waiting for them. On the Mayflower, what kind of ship was the Mayflower? The Mayflower was a sailing ship. The ship moved when the wind filled the sails, and the Mayflower was a cargo ship. She was made to carry cargo, things like cloth and hats and barrels of wine. She was not made to carry people, but the Mayflower did bring 102 people from England to make their home in the New World in the year 1620. The Mayflower was a good, strong sailing ship. She was about 90 feet long, about as long as two big trailer trucks. And she was a clean smelling ship, not like most ships of that time. For 12 years, the Mayflower had carried a cargo of wine on her voyage. Little by little, some wine slowly leaked out of the wine barrels. The wine took away the bad smells of garbage. How many people sailed on the Mayflower? Too many people. The Mayflower carried about 30 sailors and 102 passengers. 34 of them were children. There were not supposed to be that many people on the Mayflower. 
Some passengers were supposed to sail to the New World on the smaller ship, the Speedwell, but something went wrong. The two ships had begun their voyage from England together on August 5th, 1620, but the Speedwell was leaky and had to go back to shore. Some of the passengers from the Speedwell stayed behind in England, others crowded onto the Mayflower. Before the ship reached the New World, there was a new passenger on board. A baby boy was born as the Mayflower sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Guess what his parents named him? Oceanus! Who sailed on the Mayflower? A doctor, a soldier, a shoemaker, and a blacksmith were on board. There were a cooper too. His job was to look after the barrels of beer and water and to make sure that they did not leak. Most of the passengers were farmers or weavers or shopkeepers, and there were some servants on board the Mayflower. They were hired to do the hardest work in the New World. Some men brought their wives and children along. Some men sailed without their families. About 35 of the passengers were going to the New World because they could not worship God in their own way in England. They were the pilgrims. Other passengers were going because they could not find work in England. Others were going to the New World for adventure. Were the people on the ship friends? Some people were, some people weren't. The sailors hated the pilgrims and the pilgrims didn't like the sailors. The sailors made fun of the pilgrims who got seasick. They called them glibbity gabbity puke stockings. One sailor said he wanted to throw half of the pilgrims into the sea. The sailors hated the pilgrims prayers and holy songs. The pilgrims didn't like the sailors' bad language, but by the end of the voyage, the sailors had to admit that the pilgrims had plenty of courage, and the pilgrims were thankful that the sailors got them safely to the new world. What could the pilgrims take with them? Not much. Each family could take a Bible box for their family Bible and a chest for their clothes and other belongings. Mothers with babies could take a cradle for the baby to sleep in. Women could bring the things they would need for the cooking. Men could bring their guns, swords, and tools. They brought tools for building houses and tools for working in the garden. Whatever did not fit in the chest had to be left behind. If you sailed on the Mayflower, you would have to leave almost all of your toys behind. What would you eat and drink on the Mayflower? Day after day, you would eat the same kind of food. You would not like it the first day, but by the last day, you would be sick and tired of it. Most of the time, you would eat salt horse or hardtack. That's what the sailors called it. Salt horse was their name for salted beef or pork or fish. Hardtack was hard, dry biscuits. There were dried peas and beans, cheese from Holland, and some butter. To cook their food, the pilgrims would have had to build charcoal fires in metal boxes called brazers. But most of the time, the weather was so stormy that it was too dangerous to have a fire. So most of the time, the pilgrims ate cold food. There were barrels of beer and barrels of water. But after standing in the barrels for a while, the water was not safe to drink. So everyone drank beer, even the children. The pilgrims had to look for bugs in their food. Every ship in those days had bugs crawling everywhere. By the end of the voyage, the biscuits got harder, the cheese got moldy. The butter turned bad, even the beer began to go sour.